This is the follow-up to the previous video using checkboxes as radio buttons in a for loop. Previously, I said that there was a second method using the property service. We're going to look at that today. So here's the exact same setup, and actually I'm going to open up the tools, and I still have the same function here. Okay, so here's the same function we had last time, uh, just to show that it is working still, right? This is what we did last time, set up these checkboxes to work as radio buttons. It just runs through the for loop and sets everything except the current cell to false. Right there. Okay, this time let's go ahead, mark all that out. And this time we're gonna be using, like I said, the properties service. Now the initial setup is still exactly the same. Still going to use on edit. Still going to give it an E variable. So a reminder, do not run this function manually. It will fail that E variable from that E object really from the edit has to exist. All right. And then the same parameters, All right? We're still operating in the exact same space. So I only want it to work here. Let's actually uncheck that for now. All right, so it's still the same thing. If it's not the second column, if it is the first row, if it's greater than the eighth row, or if it's not true, return. Don't need to do anything. But then the actual accessing is gonna be completely different. Let's go ahead and set an R, since we're gonna be dealing with the range. Let R equals property service get script properties, get property range. Okay, and I'm just going to throw a range back into it as, as we go through this. Then let's go ahead and access that range. Sheet, so get the source where the edit occurred, e.source, get the active sheet, and get range. And we're just gonna throw that R value right back into it. And then I'm going to set it. e.range uh, get a one notation. Perfect, so here's what I want this to do. If it is a valid edit, then get whatever's in the range um, property, get that range on the sheet. Oh, let's set that to false. Set value, false. Better, all right. Get that range, access that range on the sheet, set the value to false and then set the new range as the range property. Okay, so basically, and let's shut that off right now. Basically what I wanna have happen is if I edit here, then I want it to save, better yet, I already have something checked when I check here on B5, I want it to access B2 stored in the property service, set B2 to false, and then set the range in the property service to B5. So let me make all those false again, uncheck everything, uncomment that out, and let's go ahead and test it. So that's at B2 first, and then come down and do B5. Nothing happened. Let's check our executions. We have a fail, argument cannot be null. Ooh. Where is it saying that? That's on row four, line four, here. So it's basically saying it can't find this range. Let's see what's in that. Get property. Oh, 
run that. Oh. <laughs> it's easy to make that mistake sometimes. Of trying to call properties and services as if they're functions. Oh, there's nothing there. Now, if we think about it, that makes sense. It's only setting the property here on row 9, on line 9, but it's trying to access that property on line 7. So something needs to happen to set this range property if it's the first time that it's run. Otherwise, it'll just fail out every time. So let's keep going with this R and say if R equals null, then I actually want to set this immediately, right? But if it's doing that, it means that it's the first time it's run. So there's not going to be a checkbox to uncheck. So let's just go ahead and uncheck both of those and return out. That should make more sense. So now what it's going to do is if it's a valid edit, then it's going to get whatever's in the range property. If that property doesn't exist or if it's null, then it's going to set that property as the current edit and then quit the script. Because if nothing is in here, then that means it's the first time it's running. And so we shouldn't have it run. Right, we don't want it to un unselect anything unless there is a previous value already selected. Let's give it a try. So let's go ahead again, select B2 and B5. And there it went ahead and unchecked B5 or B2, sorry. Now it unchecked B5, unchecked B3, unchecked B7, etc. Okay, so the basic function here, if it's a valid edit, get whatever's in that property. If that property doesn't exist, it means this is the first edit. So set the property and quit. If it is not equal to null, then come down here, set the range of the previous edit, which is stored in the property service, set that to false, and then set the property to the most recent edit. There we go. As always, like, subscribe, share, and of course, you can always connect with me at my email address or at Twitter, or of course, in just the comment section here. I always try to be as responsive as possible. Thanks much.